Last week, Iran seized a British tanker near the Strait of Hormuz. London accused Tehran of state piracy on the high seas, and it asked its European allies for assistance. A week has passed, and the British government and its call for help, well, they've both changed. Now London says it needs Washington's help, too, which it will get. But the U.S. wants Germany on board as well. Tonight, a formal request has gone out from Washington to Berlin. So far, the only response, silence. I'm Brent Goff in Berlin. This is The Day. All right, we have got complete coverage of this story tonight. With me here in the studio is Nicole Renvert from the German Council on Foreign Relations. And in Washington is Bradley Bowman. He is with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. And he's a former national security advisor to members of the Senate Armed Services and the Foreign Relations Committees. To both of you, welcome. Nicole, let me start with you. The U.S. made this request to Germany, which we're hearing is that the request was made several days ago for them to join this force. And they didn't get an answer. And today, the um, embassy here said... OK, we'll make it official. The request has been made official. Is Germany ignoring, and I dare say, is Germany trying to blow off the Trump administration at this juncture? Well, actually, it can't really afford to blow off the Trump administration because the whole German industry is dependent on the safety of the travel, uh, of, the, of the routes. And uh, the escalation in this region will affect the German economic sector in a way that's unprecedented. So there has to be an answer, but the problem is the coalition. And as you already pointed out, um, the SPD led uh, a, a part of the government uh, so far has been pretty outspoken that it will not support a mission under US leadership. Mm -hmm. it, it's still discussing um, the option of an EU mission. And I think the practicability of having two missions here um, might might not be what will come out at the end. So I'm pretty convinced that yeah. there has to be something in the middle. That's true. There were two missions. I mean, last week we were talking about a European-led mission, and we've also had the U.S. trying to create a coalition, an international coalition. And it seems now, with this new British government, that maybe these projects are merging. I mean, who, who knows? Brad, let me ask you. Um, what do you think about the Germans' concerns that if they join this mission in the Strait of Hormuz, that they will automatically have to side with the Americans in the event of a war between the U.S. and Iran? Is that, I mean, is that fear, is that concern um, a legitimate one? I think, respectfully, that's the wrong question. I think the right question is, what are Germany's interests and what are America's interests there? And the foremost interest, which we share, is in uh, defending the freedom of navigation and the unfettered flow of maritime commerce. That's a U.S. interest and that's a German interest. That's an interest we share as NATO allies. So while good allies can disagree on how we arrived at this point vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the Iran deal and the U.S. decision to withdraw from it, we should be able to agree that we have a vested interest, a national security interest, and an economic interest in having commercial vessels transit the Strait of Hormuz in the Gulf, un unattacked, unmolested by Iranians. That's something we should be able to agree on, and, and German officials, po politicians have said so. So the question I have for them is, how are you willing to help? Well, what do you make of the fact then, Bradley, that we have not received a firm yes from Berlin? Well, I think these things take time. I understand uh, these things have to be coordinated among various components of the German government, just like they would have to be in the U.S. So, you know, I, I, I understand these things take time. But I think if we focus on these interests that we have in common, which are very serious economic and national security interests, the answer should be yes. Uh, the question is how. You know, I understand that uh, there are limited uh, military assets that Germany can send, but there's different ways to support this. It can be mm -hmm. ships, aircraft surveillance drones. It could be monetary support. Uh, you know, I think we have to focus on the freedom of navigation and free, uh, free unfettered flow of commerce aspects to this. And if the goal is to avoid war with Iran and avoid escalation, then what we should be doing is deterring 
additional Iranian attacks on those things. And, and you know, I've, I've spoken with many um, members of the German parliament, of the German government, and they, they agree with what Bradley is saying. Let's, let's talk about our shared interest. And then they immediately say to me, Nicole, that shared interest was the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal, which we negotiated together, which the U.S. unilaterally then turned its back on. So these shared interests, I mean, how, how salient are these shared interests um, when it comes to, yeah, joining a, a coalition in the Strait of Hormuz now? I mean, the fact that the interests are basically the same um, is a fact here. And as you said, uh, many, um, many politicians in the coalition government agree. But still, um, the fact that the U.S. left the Iran deal um, somehow limited the option of negotiating with Iran, you know, what, what will be the next step. And here, the German government doesn't want to provoke the Iranians even more by having a mission under U.S. leadership, which might not help in the negotiation process with Iran. Mm -hmm. And um, again, there might be a, another solution to it because the German capabilities are pretty limited. You mm -hmm. know, Germany is not a real player when it comes to defense issues. Right. So if, for example, the Americans or even the British or the French would really rely on German military mm. support, um, I doubt that. But um, there has to be something else. And more than just a gesture, there has to be a clear commitment to support the safety of this, uh, this very important area. Well, you're talking about um, policies that bring predictability. And that's the thing that's lacking in the Trump administration. That's what we hear time and time again from um, German lawmakers. Bradley, I'll throw that to you. What should these lawmakers do? I mean, they tell us time and time again that they, they are dealing with a U.S. president who is unpredictable, who can change policies with a tweet. And they don't want to commit to something as serious as a force in the Strait of Hormuz, something that would agitate the Iranians when, that, when they know that that could easily be you know, turned over on its head by this president. I mean, what are they to do? That's a, a, a reasonable concern that has been heard before. That's a concern that some here in the U.S. share. But I don't think uh, the question is, are they willing to sign up to uh, the Trump administration's Iran policy or are they willing to sign up to the max pressure campaign? That's really not the question on the table in Berlin. The question on Berlin is, what is Germany willing to do to protect its core national security and economic interests with respect to freedom of navigation and the unfettered flow of maritime commerce? Roughly one fifth of the world's oil goes through the strait. What is Germany willing to do? And if the goal is to avoid war in the Gulf, which no one wants, no one wants, the best way to do that is to deter additional Iranian attacks on international shipping. Well, we will see if, um, if that is the conclusion of the German government, um, hopefully you know, in the next day or so. Nicole Renvert with the German Council on Foreign Relations and Bradley Bowman with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. To both of you, thank you very much.